Um, so as the third uh, speaker, I have the um, privilege, I guess, of being able to say that, well, they've covered most of what I was already going to say. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to skip through my 20 uh, slides. I actually only have three um, <laughs> to say what I have to say, <laughs> which isn't you. OK, so in terms of my research, my research profile, um, First of all, I, my background is as a social worker and I worked with, social, with uh, children um, who come into Ireland as unaccompanied refugee children who come through the, generally you go through the asylum process. Um, and the, I then, since then, have done, I did my PhD in that area and my research is now focused on the experience of refugee, asylum seeking refugee uh, young people. Um, and I'm interested as well in kind of cross-cultural social work practice and in international social work. Um, so they're my broad areas of interest and I've written um, with Liam um, uh, in relation to asylum seekers. So for me, I suppose, in terms of um, think, when I was asked to, to speak with this, my initial reaction was, I don't think I've anything really to say. And then I started thinking about, well, why, why do I consider open access to be important? And sometimes I think we probably do things without really putting a lot of thought into why we're doing them, but it's seen as a good thing to do, so we go and do it. And this was useful because it forced me to think about actually why I consider it to be um, an important thing to do. Um, so I suppose at the top of that, I've put the, the help with career development um, reason. So in other words, I guess, like what's been said uh, previously, I believe that if you have something on open access, people can it's more accessible to people. You're more likely to be cited. You're more likely to be invited to, to take part in research bids. You're more likely to be maybe invited to, to write something with someone else, to speak at a conference, um, and so on. So for in terms of the academic trajectory, if you want to uh, get promoted and so on, I think it has kind of, for me, obvious benefits in that respect that your, your work is more accessible. Um, but secondly for me, I suppose, because I come from the background of being a social worker, I want my research to be of um, practical use and to have an impact that's beyond the impact in terms of citation. So for me, if I'm uh, as somebody who's doing research on working with unaccompanied refugee children, there are increasing numbers of unaccompanied uh, minors coming into Ireland and into other jurisdictions. And I think having my papers um, accessible online mean that not just academics, but also practitioners can access those. So whether it be you know, a teacher who's uh, now working with an unaccompanied minor in a school, or it's a psychologist who's doing therapy with an unaccompanied minor, or it's a social worker, or it's a, somebody in the medical field, whoever it is, that they can have some kind of, um, they can have access to information that might, might be of use to them. Um, and then I suppose, uh, thirdly, uh, uh, sorry, I should say in relation to that point as well, um, I feel that it also has a potential to have something, what Liam has talked about, the, the impact on policy. And I suppose for me as well, my work is, is quite policy relevant and I want my work to be accessible to policymakers. And often, um, like civil servants and policymakers and people working in NGOs and so on, they don't have access to um, the journals that we are publishing in. So having this information freely available online um, to them is, I think, think um, useful in terms of um, you know if maybe they're making a submission uh, in relation to a piece of legislation or they're campaigning in relation to a particular issue or they want some information so that they can use it in the media whatever it might be um, I think it, it helps to have the information freely, freely available and then I suppose my third point is around making my research available to people without resources um, to pay for them. So, and this for me includes those who participated in my research. So I suppose two uh, particular pieces of research um, come to mind in relation to this. So one is a study that I conducted in Ethiopia with a um, former colleague, uh, Dr. Mary Allen, on gender-based violence amongst the experience of women in Ethiopia um, in relation to gender-based violence. And even just the, the, the nature of the, the type of research, the fact that it's a very sensitive topic, that women, many women in Ethiopia don't feel that they can talk about it, it's not something that's discussed openly. Um, for me, I think having a research that's accessible to to people is um, in that situation is really important. And I suppose for me, like the women participated in the research study, and I mean the likelihood is that many of them, many of them aren't able to, wouldn't be able to read anyway. But if if any of them were to go on to to study or to look into these issues in more detail, have being making sure that they can access what I have written about them to me is like crucially important. Now, obviously, I could in other circumstances, even if something wasn't openly accessible, I could make a decision that any research, anyone who participates in my research, I send them a copy 
of my article, but given the, the gap between Ireland and Ethiopia and the fact that people don't have internet access in many situations, that's not necessarily um, going to be practical. So making sure that it's available there in the future um, for them, I think, is really important. And the second example of that, I guess, is in Ireland in relation to uh, asylum seekers in the direct provision system. So again, asylum seekers in direct provision will not have the financial resources on, on the um, 21 euro... 60, 21 near 60 that they're currently getting, and they're not going to have access to pay for a journal article. So again, having that, and there's a lot of asylum seekers now who are engaging in campaigning in relation to issues they face, so having the, the information available to them for me is, is very important. And then uh, a kind of final one that I added in there was around easy dissemination on um, social media platforms such as Twitter. So I use Twitter, Liam uses Twitter as well, and we we're writing an article jointly, and when we put it up in the research repository, we shared it on Twitter. Um, and Joseph um, very kindly reminded me of this when he was uh, helping me in relation to the presentation. So even just that, being able to get your information out there. So I decided, for example, for this week, an open access week, that I was going to tweet one of my publications every day this week, just to highlight the research repository and to um, allow people have access to the publications. And I think as well, for me, like um, I, because I teach social work students and I have a lot of interaction with social work practitioners, sometimes practitioners in practice are very skeptical about what academics do. And they kind of think that, well, we just teach, you know, in you know these 12, two 12 block terms and then we're kind of off the rest of the time and we've nothing else to do. And so even just to be able to get your research out there to show this is actually what we're doing and this is the research that's available that might be able to inform your practice, I think is very important. And just my last slide, um, just wanted to kind of draw attention to the usefulness of the monthly statistic reports that the repository send out. Um, and again, thanks to, to Joseph for pointing this out to me. So what really interested me here was the fact that uh, Ethiopia appears in my downloads. Uh, and that wasn't something that I really had expected, but um, it's kind of nice to know that the research that I did in relation to a, a, co a country that wouldn't have you know, access, most people wouldn't have access to journal articles, that they're making use of the, the articles that we published in relation to um, that research. So just, yeah, the, the range of countries. I think it, it just, it, it's interesting for me to just know uh, who, what the countries are. It kind of makes you question. You'd like to know who the people are as opposed to the countries. Um, so I'm, I'd really like to know who in Ethiopia is reading it. Is it an academic? Is it someone in NGO? But I don't think we have that level of, of data, but maybe at some time in the future we might. So yeah, that's my, my, my information. Thank you. Thank you.